Hello, good morning, welcome back to the fish locker out on the boat. Out, first light on the boat. Sun has just cracked the horizon, definitely my favourite time of day. This is the closest we're going to get to a weather window at this moment in time. It's been tipping it down for like a week and it starts again tomorrow. The conditions today, they haven't left us much more choice than to go sharking. It is going to be a windy one today I reckon. Yeah, first order of the day though is to try and find some bait. Once we've found that, we'll make our way off to the sharking grounds. As usual, I'll explain everything as I'm doing it. Just wish me luck. <laughs> Let's go. Well, it's a start. Yep, that'll do. Oh, <laughs> oh, I covered the lens. Yeah, certainly a few of them down there. That's it. In three drops, I've managed to get about 15 mackerel. So I'm buzzing. Let's go. Tell you what, it's quite a fresh day out here. <laughs> yeah. I haven't gone quite as far as I was thinking of going stopped about four miles shy just because it is quite fresh out here I'll get everything sorted out and I'll get back to you right now that I've run the deepest bait out the fundamentals of shark fishing is a decent chum slick in my opinion chum, burly, rubby dubby all that type of stuff several different names for it all serves the same purpose it creates scent in the water that attracts the sharks. Now they're just swimming about, they're swimming about, feeding, cruising, whatever they're doing. Swimming about in the water, anywhere from the surface to the seabed. Now I make my chum and I freeze it into blocks. I like freezing it, not only because it lasts, but also so it thraws out gradually throughout the day and slowly releases chum. That'll create like a long line of scent. So any sharks that are swimming about, Come into that line of scent, follow it towards the boat and find my bait. Now I, I put mine out in laundry sacks. I actually, I do have a video on the Fish Locker Workshop channel showing you how I make my chum. With these conditions here today, <laughs> it's going to be one of them days. You're just slopping a bubble. Doesn't make it a bad day of shark fishing. A bit of energy and a bit of movement in the water is a good thing. You get some days where it's really, really slack. It's just, there's no movement at all. The sea's like glass. Although those are sometimes the nice days to be at sea, they aren't necessarily a good day for fishing, especially not for sharks. There you go, I've got my chum block inside my laundry sack. What you will notice now, is this area where I put this chum bag out, it's going to create like a calm patch and that's the oil leaking out. It's chopped up fish and fish oil and bran and all those good smelly things. It creates like a film on top of the water that you'll be able to see. Now my traces, I make all my own traces at home. They come in two parts. There's a part incorporating a lead and a part with a hook. A piece of trace incorporating a lead with a strong swivel and then an interchangeable hook length. And all I've got on the end of there is I've got a 12-0 to 14 oh circle hook with the barb crushed. These are brand new, I just made these last night, so I haven't crushed the barbs on these yet. But yeah, all I do is just take a, take a pair of pliers. Crush the barb off. The shark fishing that I do, that 99% of the shark fishing in the UK is all catch and release. There was a point in time when they used to kill everything just for the just for the trophy shot, but thankfully those times have passed. And I do like a muppet on the end. This part here, this last 12 inches, is the part most likely to see the waves, going to see the shark's teeth. So I make them in like two foot lengths that I can change in and out. So when these get chowed up, I don't have to get rid of the whole trace, I just change the hook length. Any baits will do. <laughs> I've caught sharks on them. 
of course shacks on whiting, pouting, codling, mackerel, scad, um, gurnard, poor cod, uh, squid, octopus, bluey, the, the lot, the, the just blue sharks are opportunistic feeders. The best baits are fresh baits, bloody baits, scenty baits. But yeah, they'll they'll take pretty much out. <laughs> I'll show you one of my setups from one end to the other. To start off with, I like fishing a fixed pole setup. When I'm fishing with a couple of three people, you can get away with using all fixed pole setups. But on my deep rod, I've got a multiplier. That's a uh, pen measurement solid carbon 20 to 30 rod, and it's a Finnor Marquesa 16. This one is a Conflict Offshore Casting Tuna Rod and I think it's 120 gram. It's 30 to 180. And on this I've got a Spinfisher Live Liner 7,500. Oh, some dolphins. The reason why I like the Live Liner reels is because it allows this bait runner function. It allows the line to leave and then by turning the handle you get full drag. On this I have 60 pound mainline braid and I have a 100 pound mono rubbing leader. A large bottle float, you just need something that's going to be buoyant enough to float the trace and the bait and the weight and a large coast lock swivel onto my wire trace. Like I said, I like to have Muppets. Muppets I feel are an extra attractor. I've just got a mackerel flapper. A lot of dolphins playing up the front of the boat. People will ask me. <laughs> people will ask me quite regularly. Says, "Oh, do the dolphins never take the bait? So the dolphins never get hooked up now? They're too smart." Just hook the circle hook through the head of the mackerel. And all I'm going to do is just feed it out down the slick. That'll probably do. And I'll set this one on the bait runner. So if a shark picks up this bait, there's going to be people that are complaining about feeling seasick watching this video, I can tell. If a shark picks up this bait, I'll know because it'll go. Now that I'm fishing, I am fishing for sharks now. Everything else gets cleared out of the way. All my tackle boxes, all the spare bags, my sandwiches, all that lot just gets all cleared out of the way because when you walk into one of these fish, it might be a 200 pound fish on the end of the rod. You want to have everything to hand. So all I want to have is I want to have my gloves, a tape oil, two pairs of gloves, two pairs of gloves in case you, you've got a spare. A tea bar, two tea bars for a spare. My tags. I've got my knife on here. I've got my life jacket on there. Everything else isn't needed, so it's out of the way. Some days you'll do this and you'll literally you'll feed a bait straight over the side and a shark will take you instantly like that. I've had it before like where I haven't even had a chance to get two rods out before I've got a shark on. Then other days they'll make you wait a while. They'll make you wait an hour, two hours. Just all depends what's going on. I never really bring a lot of tackle with me when I'm coming sharking anyway. This is this is literally the tackle box. And all I've got in here is some spare leader, some spare rooks. On top of here I've got some swivels. See the dolphins there. Eh? Still here. They're all going about sniffing about in that slick, aren't they? I do really enjoy my shark fishing. It's um, it's one of the few bits of fishing that you can do in the UK where you can possibly hook up into an absolute, a true monster. We have a few species of sharks here. The most common one in the summer is a blue shark. That's what I'm targeting today. They are uh, proper ocean going sharks. We know this because we tag these sharks. I've been tagging sharks for a few years now with Noah. That's these tags. What you'll do is, you, if, I catch one, if I catch one today, you'll see me deploy one of these tags into it. Record some, some relevant information like its size, its sex, any notable marks like scars or deformities on it. I might even catch one with a tag already in it. And also a new thing that we've started doing. 
DNA swabbing. So these are swabs here, where you'll rub it on the shark. It's, it collects mucus from on the shark's skin, and it's young for gene sequencing. So there's, there's a a wealth of valuable information that's collected by anglers, anglers like myself and charter skippers around the UK, to help the marine scientists better understand these sharks and how we can, how we can protect them. For anyone curious what the conditions are like at the moment, we have two conflicting swells. We have a northerly wind which is coming in this direction, which is creating the chop, which is making the boat rock side to side, like this. And then also we have more of like a westerly swell. So we have a big swell that's coming in this way and we have a chop that's coming in this way. That's why the boat is kind of going like that. The chop on this side is about two foot. Whereas these swells here are more like six foot. I can tell that because I'm, I'm just shy six foot, I'm 5'11". And I'm stood maybe three or four inches off the waterline. And when we go down into the trough of these waves, it, well that one there was more like seven or eight. This one that we're just rising up now. I completely lose track of the horizon and the land. So I know from the trough to the peak of that wave, it's, it's over my height, so it's over six foot. An understanding of the conditions and what you're comfortable in is, is paramount. Because I've been out, <coughs> I've been out in this boat before in 20 foot seas. But if they're 20 foot swells and they're 10 seconds apart, it's just a real slow. Whereas you can go out sometimes and it's three foot, but it's every like half a second and it's just like doosh, 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 and it's horrible. Got yet? That was a really finicky one. Got it in the end though. <laughs> yeah. I think I've been playing with that for a while. The float was just sat up straight like that and then just went one side then the other side, they went zoosh. Yeah, I don't know if you saw our, our set the hook into it either. With using circle hooks, you don't set the hook as in like set it like you do with a J. You just turn it and it's cutting the corner of its mouth. That made me wait 26 minutes for that bite. Yeah, that'll be a 50, 60 pound fish. There we go. Sorry, this tag number is four two one five six. There's a shark. There's a tag. Right by the dorsal. DNA swabbed and now we're tagged. <laughs> this, these conditions just make everything a chew. 
usually you can get them alongside the boat you just offer them up and you can dip that tag straight into them but because because today I'm all like this every time I lined up to try and get the tag ready <laughs> the shark went under the water but yeah we got the first one that was uh, that was a nice female blue shark I'll get all my paperwork written up get that bait fed back out and I'll change these <coughs> I change these gloves over well we didn't blank Our fresh bait just a new macro flapper Yeah, like I was saying earlier, the biggest thing about this is being organised because when it kicks off, it can all kick off all at once. It's not uncommon sometimes to get like a double hookup, which is why when I'm on my own, I never fish more than two rods. These tags are through nowhere. I've, I've tagged, I think I've tagged probably like 10 species of sharks all, all over the world for nowhere. And all they'll do is I'll record a load of information like its length, its sex, its, its estimated weight, where I caught it, any noticeable features and if somebody else catches that shark they'll record the same features, all that same information and it'll be able to track like migration routes and growth rates and um, like population diversity by sex as in all the females will be in one place and all the males will be in another or it's all valuable information. And this is for Simon Thomas with the Pat Smith database. This is for something different. It's all angler led information. And all vital for marine conservation. Yep, so there are some waiting down there. The blue sharks, they're not they're not holding to a feature. Like poor beagle sharks, usually you'll find them over a, like a set of wrecks or a piece of reef or something like that. Blue sharks are just like marauding, nomadic almost. Yeah, I've caught more sharks on whiting than I have on mackerel. See, my, my, the way that my mind, my, my fish logic mind works, being that mackerel are quite fast and whiting aren't. And there's a lot of whiting on the seabed. So I would think that blue sharks would most often be rooting about down near the seabed for these whiting. Yeah. I don't know whether there's anything in it or not, whether or not I'm just... If I'd have used all mackerel I would have only caught my mackerel, but yeah. I like whiting as a bait too. I think we've got a shark up on the surface, near this nearest float. Yeah, it's just here. About 10 metres behind the boat. What I need to be careful of here is it doesn't come up and bite the bag because they're a nightmare for that. Yeah. A little white in again. Oh, there's two. <laughs> there's two sharks. Literally right here. One's there, the other one's further out. Yeah, we've got two sharks of around about 30 pound, just playing. They're just at the back of the slick here. Got ya. Well, I got one of them. Four two one five six two. Tag deployed.
mucus swab taken. Back away. Right, where's the other one gone? I'll keep an eye on it, like I say. They are quite sneaky. They'll come in and act like they're, they're swimming away. They'll go down deep and come up right underneath the boat and bite the bag. Come on, where are you? I hope that show's okay on the camera. Them two sharks coming in together. That, he was really bold. The way that I knew that he was there was I actually saw him through the water. These polarised glasses are brilliant for that. Next to my float, I saw like a flash and it was a shark turning. And then as I'd managed to kind of bring the bait closer up, they both came in, followed the bait towards the bag. Providing that we haven't spooked that other one, the one that's had the hook and had the tag, I'm not expecting to catch him again. But the other one that was free swimming, the really bold one that I had to keep an eye on because I thought he was no eat the bag. Unless he's unless he's seen some other bait somewhere, I would expect that we'll have him in a second. You'll notice that I'm T-barring these sharks off at the side of the boat. It's far quicker, far, far quicker, far simpler and far safer for both myself and the shark. Now sharks, you don't have any bones, it's all cartilage. The skeleton's all cartilage. And they're used to the weight of the water. They're used to the weight of the water support. Oh, what was that? Got the deeper bit? Yeah, it is. It's a deeper rod. Oh no. Deeper rod's got a shark on it, and I've just reached the bottom with this. This is why you don't fish too many rods. Now we have shark on. Yeah, as I was saying, they're all cartilage and they're used to the weight of the water supporting. Used to the weight of the water supporting their vital organs. This doesn't feel like a bad fish, this. So keeping them in the water is the best thing you can do for the shark. I'll only bring them aboard when I really have to. If for whatever reason, like... It's if for whatever reason there's multiple hooks stuck in the fish, or it's all wrapped up and I can't do anything with it, but I bring it aboard. And generally, only if the fish is less than 100 pound. Because then I can cradle the whole fish, I can pick it up out of the water and support it as I lift it up. You don't really want to be dragging them over the gunnel. <laughs> oh, I love it. You've got a good fish that's running. Don't get much better. Oh, we've got another shark on. Got a shark on the other rod. Yeah, the other rod's picked up a shark as well. That'll go in a second, that other rod. There we go, see. Just have to try and make some headway on this one before I can deal with the other one. I think he's, he's playing with it. It doesn't look like a very big fish as the floats come back up. I don't know how well you can see it, but that other float now is behind the boat. That shark has picked it up and moved out of the slick and it's over there now. So yeah, as soon as I've dealt with this one, I've got a shark on that other rod to deal with. <laughs> oh no! Oh. And we 
we have a little shark on the surface as well. This is a big fish, this. This is a big shark. Come on, get your head up. Right, coming in now. Tag number four two one five six three. There you go. Right, that was that one out of the way. Get this rod tucked up. Right, shark tagged, swabbed. Need to get another tag on my stick. And I did it with the shark that I've got on there. Right. This next tag, 421-564. Right, let's have at you then. Just at the back of the boat, there is another shark. This one is actually, <laughs> this is a recapture. I think this is a shark that I've tagged today. This is a recapture of <laughs> tag number ending in 62. So yeah, <laughs> I was wrong. One of the sharks that I caught earlier today and tagged, I've just recaught it. Let me see if I can't pull out that little one that tied it down there. At this moment in time, we have three free swimming sharks around the boat. There's a little one out here, there's one down underneath the boat and there's one out there, I can see it. And you know, I was saying that I didn't think we'd recapture one that had tagged, well, that just shows you how little effect for the shark, tagging it and hooking it does. Oh, shark on. Got you. Yeah, it shows how little it upsets them, how little it affects them, how little trauma they go through. Being that not 15 minutes ago did I hook one, bring it to the side of the boat and tag it, released it, that I've re-caught the same fish. I think this is that little tiny one that was been zipping around the place. That is a tiny one, there you go. <laughs> I hope you saw that there, that one was about that big. This is the beauty of having these circle hooks. And because, because I've crushed the barb on them, as soon as you create a little bit of slack and they shake the red, the hook will just come straight out. But yeah, those are too small to tag anyway. Oh, we've got another one. Are you going to take it straight away, are you? Doing? Are you going to have it? Right, he's got it in his mouth. Got you. Practically hand fed that one. I'm quite keen to get these little sharks hooked and tagged and away. Because I'm after his great grandmother. Yeah, I'd, I'd like one today over 100. 
and these little scratchy ones are always quicker on the bait. This one here, lifting it out just to show you. Blu-ray, Blu-ray and Ludolph. See them scars on its tail there? This one's been bitten by another shark. Right. This one is actually a juvenile male. You can see by the claspers there. But yeah, this one here has been bitten by another shark. See that scar on its tail? There's the tag. Tagged and swabbed. 120 centimetres. About 20 odd pound. There it goes. Yeah, you don't often catch many males. That one's whack. That one was quite special. But yeah, they're still all around the boat. I'm gonna have to get my life in order because I've got two swab kits to write up, three tags. I've got to put two new baits out, get myself sorted. But yeah, this is what I mean about you need to be organized because it happens all at once. Down. Come on, please be the big one. Well, it might be. It hasn't pulled much drag off yet, so it either doesn't know it's hooked or it isn't the big one. There's another free swimming shark around with this one. There's one up on the surface and there's one below it. Oh. This is a tagged fish and I don't know if it's one of mine. This is a tagged shark and it's not one of mine. 419481. And that is a big fish. That is a that is a big one. There we are. There's the tag in her. She's got a fair few bite marks in her side, but yeah, that tag number is definitely 419481. Four one nine four eight one. Yeah. <laughs> Like that. <laughs> uh, practically hand fed him. This lad doesn't know he's hooked. There he is, yeah. He's gonna know in a second. There you go. <laughs> Get up, lass! There's a shark that is really aggressive that just attacked the float at the back. That might be a male. He was just coming, steam straight in. He's still going at it now. Here he comes. There he is. Holy crap! There is an absolute flipping jumbo down there.
there's a shark down there now that's next to this one. I'm not joking, it'll be 200 pounds if it's a, if it's an ounce. Come on up, up you come. I want to get this one off and get that one on rapid. This isn't a small one, but that one's even bigger. Lay up last one. Yeah. Still there? Yeah, it's still there. All right, come on, get off. Right there. It's just underneath the boat. I don't know if you can see it or not, but <laughs> that is an absolute flipping giant. Oh, I might have it. I don't know, I've got one of them. Don't know if it's the big one or not, but I've got one of them. Well, it might be it. Definitely took off. <laughs> no, it's not. It's a nice one, but it's not the big one. There it is. Back again, just behind the boat. trying to catch some video of that bigger shark here's the one that I've just hooked landed there it is so you can see it under the water there oh, and there's another one so there's the monstrous great big one here's the 60 pounder that I've got on the hook that I've just tagged they're absolutely everywhere Just mental, absolutely mental. <laughs> Someday, like I said, I like a bit of energy in the water. Even though it was rough, I knew that I was going to get a decent day. I would love to get out of that big fish. The fish we've been catching so far have been all a real good stamp. A couple of little scratty ones, the majority of them are in like the 50, 60, 70 bracket. That big one down there could eat one of them. It is a flipping giant. Its pectoral fins are like that freaking big. Shark on. Shark on the deep rod. This feels like a nice fish, this one. This fish is just running around the boat at the minute. Didn't like the look of the boat, it's gone. Going down. Turning the clicker on just so you can hear where it's going, what it's doing. It's no good with my back to you, you can't see what fish is doing. And it's off again. Yeah. 
Oh, it's gone. Oh. I don't know if you saw there, just as we went over that swell and come back down again, because we were lifting right up on like a six foot swell and dropping back down again, it's come up as we've come down and it's popped itself off. <laughs> what a kick in the stones. Flipping it. That one took hard. Oh. I'd made down. <laughs> I had made down writing them tag cards and this rod was in the rod holder right next to the boat and it's just arched straight over and gone <laughs> again it's not the giant it's not the giant one but it is another nice one Tag deployed. Now what I'm doing here is, I've measured the side of my boat. I know how long certain sections are inside of my boat. And also I've, I've done enough of these. <laughs> I've done, I've done best part of 50 of these this year. I know roughly how big these sharks are and I'm estimating them to within five centimeters. And the way I did that was I have I've made up a couple of tape measures for the sharking competition that we held last year. And I mark off in colours. Yeah. That one had away one of my Muppets. One of my Muppets is no more. But we've still got one. I only brought 10 of those mucus sampling kits with me. I've already used seven as a shark on the surface. Some days you can wait all day for a shark. And other days, like today, I mean, I've lost count. I think I've probably had about 10. I've had about 10 and there's probably been like seven or eight that I haven't hooked because I've been busy playing a fish when they've been round the boat. There it is. There you go. Didn't take long, did it? That float, that other float's behaving weird. Four, two, one, five, six, eight. I'm seeing all these numbers, it's not going to make any difference or any, <laughs> it's not going to mean that to you, but when I'm going back through and I'm filling out my paperwork, I'll cross check my video against my paperwork to make sure I've got it all right. Shark on. Got ya! <laughs> I knew it. I knew it was just down there playing with it and I just had to let a little bit of line off. Don't know you're hooked yet, do you? There it goes. Realise now. I am starting to feel it in my back a bit now. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this is behaving like a decent fish. I'll tell you what, this is, this is a big shark, this. This is a big flipping shark. This is a very big shark. This is a very, very, very big shark. Holy sh... Tell you what, she nearly had me...
Oh, then. That'll be the big one. Yeah, that is. Get her tail up to the back of the boat. That is half the length of the boat. And she is massive. She is a very big girl. You know, I always said that this one was behaving different. This one was behaving like a big fish. Four, two, one, five, six, nine. Right, what I'm going to have to do is offer her up against the side of the boat to measure her. Get away, girl. Good lass. Right, I need some time to sort my life out before I start getting more of these. We have a shark. It's just kicking about down here. Shark down there is just taking the bait and he's now hooked. You must be shifted like hell there. Huh? Hooked up again, mate. Sorry, I'll call you back. This is the shark that I tagged earlier. So I've had two recaptures of sharks that I've caught earlier on in the day and re-tagged. There's the tag. You ready? I think there must be something wrong with that deeper bait because it's just not being touched. I'm going to bring that in now. You can pick it out and change the lever for Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I've done real well here, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in early and we'll go and watch the red arrows. Right, I better go. I've got another fish to Yeah, me too. I'm playing one at the minute. Just talking there with another sharking skipper. There's another skipper out here, a charter skipper, just out the back of us. I'm drifting faster than he is because I'm I'm a smaller, lighter boat. And he's having he's having a hell of a day and all. I think he's probably had well it come out after me. I think he's had a couple less than I have. But um, yeah, I think that's gonna be the plan. Once I've dealt with this fish, I will look at Look at what the bait situation's like, because we've been hammering it. I'll see how many tags I've got left. I think I've only got two or three tags left. I'll fish it out for another 20 minutes, then go in early and pick up Hannah and James because there's a red arrows display later on. We'll go out on the boat to watch that. This is how small it is. There's several small ones around the boat at the minute. There's one, there's one. It's all underneath, isn't it? Look. There's one in this wave. There's number three.
that deeper rod it's had the bait away and I knew that because I wasn't catching any fish on it <laughs> I get my last tag sorted put my last baits out that's what we'll do it's just in time as well I think because this wind's picking up it's the deeper rod Got on you. It's either running towards me or he's a tiny one. That was like the itchiest, bitchiest, teeny weeny one. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that shark on the surface there, and I swear it was like a dogfish. Although I didn't start out as far out as I was going to go this strong wind that we've had all day we have drifted <laughs> five and three quarter miles yeah we're now out in the shipping lanes see that tanker there yeah we're right out amongst it don't think it's going to be long before we have another bite i don't know if you've seen but the tide's changed now so yeah, it's going to get sloppier. We're going to have a wet ride home. Oh. Oh, yeah. I do love that sound. One on this road now as well. It's all go. Tag number is four two one five five five. This one is an absolute micro shark. Yeah. Got a really fat gut on it. He's uh, it's too small for a tag. That was a drop back bite. That float there, instead of being sat upright, just laid flat. That's on you. These seas are getting bigger. Four, two, one, five, five, six. Right, turn around, Steve. There's another one, there's a shark just here now. It's like a 30 40 pounder. I'll get a bait fed out to him. Now we've got sharks on. Oh, there he is. That feels like a nice one, too.
Here he goes. I was messing about with that side of the boat. I've got a little camera down at the side of the boat there. I was messing about with it, trying to get it in, in view for the camera. And yeah, let it spit the hook. I don't mind. Hopefully it's got some good footage. <laughs> Shark's bitten me line through. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna go and see if I can't get that back. Yeah, shark's come across the surface and bit through my brain. I'm hoping that my trace is still attached to the bottom of it. Got my trace back. Let's quickly pull it in before we get a shark on it. Yeah, I don't know how well you can see it, but this line has been inside a shark's mouth. There, look. See all the bits of the mono? There. The mono hasn't parted, even though the shark's had it in its mouth, look. But as soon as the shark's teeth have touched the braid, it's parted it off. That was very lucky. Yeah, I managed to get all of my leader back and my trace. This little guy doesn't even know he's hooked. Two one five five seven. Sounds like a better fish. That's another very nice fish. Four two one five five eight forty pound. And we have company. It's my last tag. Wah. Tell you what, I've had a workout today. Not yet. Come here, Bobby. We'll get a bigger one. Yeah, I want my last tag to be a bigger one than that.
21559. The length of that shark was 2 total length 170. I have a lot of paperwork to continue filling out. And I also I have I have one of these for every one of those swabs that I've taken. So I have enough <laughs> enough paperwork to keep me going for a little while. I am going to just feed one more bait out. Because I've, I just can't say no. <laughs> I've got sharks round the boat as we speak right now. There it goes. Oh, that was a nice run. <laughs> This feels like a nice shark, this. <laughs> feels like a nice shark and I've used my last tag. This does feel like a nice fish, this. Just in case. Oh, it is a nice fish. It's not an absolute dinosaur, but it's a nice one. Nice one to end on as well. I wish I'd saved that tag. That is an absolute stunner of a fish. Waves are picking up. My trunk bag's now empty. That is a stunner of a fish to end on. That is every bit 100 if not 120 pound blue. To give you some type of scale, I'm in a 17 foot boat. Its nose is midships and its tail is past the end. Go on, show us your teeth, girl. Ah, fantastic. Are you ready to go back? Go. See you girl. There we go. Final swab. Number ten on a hundred pound plus shark. I wish I'd saved my. <laughs> I wish I'd saved my last tag for that as well. Oh wow! It's gonna be a long, sloppy, wet ride home now. Let's go. different day in here now it is all right unbelievable session on the sharks it was a hell of a rough ride in though my back feels like it's about six inches short <laughs> yeah that was a that was a really rough ride back in didn't lose any gear tagged a load of sharks took a load of dna swabs and i'm all back in by three o'clock in the afternoon i'm gonna go more up tidy the boat down go and get hannah and james gonna watch the red arrows I hope you enjoyed joining me. I hope you found it interesting. All the very best. See you later. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out the Fish Locker YouTube channel, 
where we have hundreds of videos from our adventures just like this one. We upload new videos every Sunday evening, so don't forget to click subscribe and we'll see you on the next one. Let's go.